Hi, my name is Steve Hughes, and welcome to this week. This is Sunday. I love Sunday so much because today is Random Day. That means we're just going to be talking about anything that we want to talk about. If you're new to this channel, you know this is where I discuss all things related to financial services, their products, the compensation, the IMOs, comparing the different IMOs, the pr promotion guidelines, which a lot of you are calling me on the promotion guidelines. And i got to be honest with you, folks, just ask them one simple question. Do I have to recruit to be promoted to the top level? Whatever their level is, 110%, 120%, 140%, whatever it is, do I have to recruit at any point in my career with your company in order to get the top contract? Right? That's the first thing. They're lying to you if they tell you they don't. How many applications are you selling per week? Okay, you want to flush out the recruiters who've never sold anything that want to go buy a book to tell you what it is you need to do rather than them do it, leading by the front and going out there and putting their name on applications every single week. That's what the recruiters don't do, and that's what you should look for in whoever you decide to partner up with. And remember, the IMOs are important. You should compare, compare the IMOs. But that day-to-day -day relationship with somebody that's been doing it for many, many, many years is also critically important to your success. The last thing you want is a network marketing type of organization where all your training comes through this upline, zero home office support or training. It all comes to the upline, and that upline hasn't ever sold a stinking thing. So make sure you're looking at that. So we, we discuss all that stuff, and we provide third-party documentation, not conversation, but documentation, so that you can decide what's best for you in this industry moving forward. This week, I'm talking about what we have in our hands right here, right now. The question is, do you understand what that is and will you take advantage of it? So let's talk about this. Uh, what does it take to start your own business? I know many of you never owned your own business, so maybe you come into this situation with maybe an employee mindset. You've never really opened your own business. You don't know what that takes. So if you don't know what that takes, you don't know what you're given, right? And I've been involved in the insurance industry since I was 24 years old, passed my state exam uh, in the state of Florida, still hold my license there. But I've also, throughout my career, uh, ventured in other types of businesses as additional income source, but never leaving the insurance industry because it provides me some things that I want to talk about with you today on this video that you can't get anywhere else, right? So when I left it, if you know, for even a brief period of time, I always came running back, understanding completely what it is that we're given in this industry. But sometimes, like I said, if you've never ventured out and started your own business, it's very difficult to know what you have uh, if you've never been in that situation so or know what you've been given unless you understand what it takes to, to uh, provide those things, right? So let's itemize the things that we would have to do if we started a brick-and-mortar business. Let's take, for example, I mean, you have to write a business plan, right? You have to develop a product. You have to create marketing materials, brochures, website, technology to handle the sales. Look, I know there's online businesses out there you can do, but there always is, you have to make some sort of an investment before making a withdrawal from the bank, right? I mean, typically speaking, all businesses require you to put money out before you actually start making an income. Well, brick and mortar businesses is just like that. So I've named off three. Uh, you have to set up vendor relationships. You're probably gonna be manufacturing a product. No matter what that is, there's something you have to get from somebody else, so you have to develop those relationships, right? You have to get a business location, right? You're gonna, and they're not going to wait until you make your first sale in order to, you know, not, you know, to, to, to lease you that spot. You're going to have to write a check for that location before you actually start conducting business, right? You're going to have to set up a compensation package, uh, commission structure if you're using salespeople, right? Um, if not, you're going to have to figure out what your profitability is. What's the product cost to, 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 uh, to create? What, is it going to, you know, what am I going to sell it for? And, you know, where my profit margins are? And how much i got to make per month? Or how many sales I have to make per month in order to break even before I actually start making money? And again, that's a mindset issue. So you've got to take off that employee hat, put on the business hat. I've got my golf hat on today. But put on that uh, business hat and realize that you're the last person to get paid when you're in business for yourself. Right? So you have to develop a marketing plan. Well, you should anyway. A lot of people don't. A lot of people don't create business plans. But if you're serious about it, you need to have a plan. A plan, you know, going into business without a plan is only a plan to fail, right? So develop a marketing plan. Hire office staff. Again, they're going to want a paycheck. Whether or not you get a paycheck 
the employees and your staff, they're not going to show up tomorrow morning without a paycheck because it's not their business, it's yours. You got to hire sales agents to go along with that compensation package I talked about. You got to have to set up promotions and incentives to, you know, all that. I mean, look, we're in the middle of Christmas season right now. All all these retailers are are just dropping their prices all over the place, which which lowers their margins. They still have to have fixed costs, which is the building, the employees, the staff, the licenses, the insurance. All that stuff doesn't change. It's because you make less money. Right? These are things you have to understand if you've never been in business for yourself, right? Develop new products. You can't sell the same, same uh, trinket forever. You're going to have to do, do, improve it and develop new products, come out with different lines, whatever. And lastly, you need to have a lot of money, right? I mean, that's the problem with starting brick and mortar businesses. On the, the average individual, the only way to, to, uh, to get into a business for themselves is either go borrow money from their family or friends, try to qualify for a business loan. Good luck with that. Um, and, and uh, or, or you know, or sh- shoestring it, which means you're going to be doing it with the least amount of money required. Not necessarily a bad thing, but a tough thing uh, to succeed in. And all along, you're doing it without a paycheck, right? As you can tell, I like to play golf, and so I was in the golfing industry, and someone showed me their embroidery uh, uh, business that they had in Southern California. And how this is beautiful, big open warehouse, all these very, very expensive em- sewing machines and embroidered caps, and uh, you know, every time a cap went off that sewing machine, they were doing, I think they had 15, uh, one machine with 15 sewing heads on it, and they were doing 15 caps about every five minutes. And of course, every cap was about three, four dollars wholesale to sew that cap. Not the cap, but just to put the logo on it, right? And you know, of course, this money is just dripping off the sewing machine. So I got excited, go, well, you know, maybe I'm, I should do this as an investment. And I started an embroidery business, which later became an embroidery and screen printing business, right? So let me show you because uh, I think it's important that I go through this with you to show you exactly what that means, right? So uh, I started in business in 2005. The first machine we bought was, I think, $125,000. And we did this at a trade show. We went to a trade show, found a machine. I think it had three heads on it or whatever, three sewing heads. Looked something like this, right? It was a, it was a, it was a sewing machine like this, had three sewing heads on it. So I could do three pieces of clothing at one time, right? 125000 Now, I couldn't, I had, to, I had to pay that money before I sewed the first hat, right? So if you, un- look, that's why, I, you know, sometimes when we're talking to people and they go, well, I don't want to go to a conference, a training conference, and learn, and, and, and learn to improve my skill set and increase my chances of success in a business uh, before I actually make money. I can't make an investment until I actually start making a profit, really. I had $125,000 in the machine, and it wasn't even delivered yet, <laughs> right? So then I had to go out and get a building. Now, even when we first started out, we did it in our garage. So I put the thing in the garage, so we'll eliminate the building. But generally speaking, you're going to need a building, right? A place for your customers to come in, or in my case, a warehouse to put the machine on the ground. But I put it in my house, so I eliminated this off, you know, initially. You can't do it like that forever. There's zoning and requirements and all that kind of stuff, but... We got away with it for a while, but I still had to go out and generate what? I had to generate a pricing, right? So I had to know what I wanted to sell my product for. I had to buy the product. Like I said, vendor relationships. I had to buy these caps, right? I had to have something to sell, right? Before I could put the, the company's logo on it, on their cap, I had to have the caps. So I had to go out and buy caps. So you can't buy two at a time. Right? You're going to need some inventory. So I had to set the vendor relationships, buy those caps, set my pricing, and then if ultimately, because I was doing the sewing a lot of times, because uh, I couldn't afford to hire employees, I had to come up with a, with a compensation package, right? Because I was, going to, I, w- I was using sales reps, outside sales reps that would call on local businesses, golf courses, you know, any construction business or whatever to sell uh, embroidered clothing and caps. So I had to come up with a compensation package so I could pay commissions to my agents, right? So now I've got pricing, I've got inventory, I've got to have my, my, uh, my materials to sew on. I had to come up with a compensation package, right? Then I had to come up with marketing materials, brochures. Brochures they could leave behind with the client, right? I had to have samples to show, right? I had to, I had to sew some stuff. Again, I'm paying for all this stuff, then so in this case, I eliminated the building, but I didn't eliminate the majority of the cost. All this money had to go out. Now, this machine was costing me, I think it was about 
$2,500 a month. Now, I couldn't tell the leasing company that, hey, look, I'm just starting out. I didn't make any sales this month, Can I, but I, so I can't make you a payment. They come get it, right? The, the one thing I love about people is, well, I, you know, they, they're looking for motivation. Now, maybe some of you are, are have a, you know, won the lottery and you got a lot of money to bank, and that's great. I'm glad for you. But most of us, including myself, if I need to have mo- motivation, if I, if I for whatever reason can't get out of bed one day and, and go out there and visit with clients and sit down and talk to them about protecting their family and their home and selling some life insurance, I just go to the mailbox, right? I mean, pull out the mailbox. There's bills in there I cannot pay. That's all the motivation I need. But in this case, this keeps you motivated, right? Well, years ago, I was in the car business before I actually got in the insurance business, and they have a habit of hiring people that are, that are married, that, are, that have a mortgage, they have kids, they got a boat and an RV. Why? Because those things are hanging on them because they have to make their payments monthly. If they find someone that has all these things that they're making payments on, they know they're going to stay motivated because they have to make the payments on those things or the bank's going to come get it, right? So ultimately, I had all this stuff. And as I started making money, I then had to go out and get a building, 5,000 square foot, right? That was costing me about 3500 a month. It got to the point where I had to make $50,000 in sales, not me or the, the company, in sales just to break even. That's before I made any money for myself. $50,000 in sales per month before I even got a paycheck because remember, all these things had to be paid for first. As well as I had employees, which I didn't put on this chart, that handled the billing, the bookkeeping, you know, sales people were, were on commission, but the employees were not. I had people run the machines because well, I got to the point where I couldn't run the machines myself all the time. And I had a bookkeeper to bill and collect money. And then, of course, you, you have to chase your money. Some people want to pay on a net 30 or a credit card, whatever. All, this is an operation that caused that you had to put all this out before you can actually generate uh, any money for yourself. Now, what does it take to be a life insurance agent? Okay. Look, you had to get a license. That's going to cost you, well, I can lower the cost for you about 70% on the pre-licensing. Pre-licensing is with companies like Excel, Exam FX. There's a lot of them out there. Uh, and they ran between $200 to $250 for that online pre-licensing course. Most states require 30 hours or so of pre-licensing before they'll allow you to sit down with your, and take the test. So you got to get a license. That's going to be a couple hundred bucks. You have to get some business cards and maybe some basic office supplies, a briefcase, uh, you know, maybe go out and get yourself a decent uh, casual, not real casual, business casual uh, clothing to start out. Very minor expenses. Uh, you have a couple of conferences per year, training conferences, not raw, raw conferences, not going in there and get all lathered up, excited. Uh, I'm talking about training conferences a couple of years. So there's going to be expense there, but that's your continuing education. You're going to have gas. You're going to have leads. Right, leads in this business can run fifty cents to forty nine dollars and fifty. I've seen them for eighty five and ninety dollars with some companies. Right, uh, again, it's important that you are that, that you are involved in a, with an IMO that owns their own lead program. There's a tip for you, and has the technology to make the program integrity based, meaning you're not buying leads where someone else has already sold that person a product. Okay. Big point there. Not recycled, repurposed, or redated leads that are sold over and over and over and over and over again. Buying old leads is not a problem as long as that lead has not been sold a product with your company, right? Because I get this all the time. When you buy a lead, people say, oh, that's expensive. Well, okay, but most IMOs are co oping or co-investing in that lead with you because here's, here's how it works out. And I'm, talking about, I'm not talking about the bonus leads, the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 50 cents, A, B, C. Sorry, B and C, A's I am talking about. A leads is what we're going to use that on this video. It's called fresh leads, right? That's what I'm talking about. Brand new, fresh leads, never sold to another agent. Not redid, not repurposed, not recycled. That's what we're talking about here. If you're on that kind of a lead program, in general, most companies, IMOs, not lead companies. Lead companies are in the business to sell leads. I'm talking about IMOs who are in the business to sell insurance but sell you leads as a means to sell the insurance product, right? But most of those companies are co-oping with you on the lead in your area. So here's what happens. Most companies will mail for you on your behalf. So look, if the IMO, just so you understand, if the IMO is mailing to a county that gets on average 1%, right? Let me just clean this board off real quickly. Give me just a little, little space to talk about here. 
So if the IMO is mailing into your area, right, and there's a 1% return, you ordered 10 leads, right? Let's say you want 10 leads a week, brand new fresh leads, right? They, they're going to have to probably spend, you know, five to $700 mailing hundreds of, le of le direct mail letters in, in this area to get you 10 leads, right? Here's the great thing about our business. You and I don't have to pay for these hundreds. We're only paying for the 10 leads that they generated for us that we wanted, right? So whether you're paying 27 or 49, whatever, 35, 49, whatever it is, let's just say you buy 10, they, they, produce, they generate 10 leads for you. Let's just say you're paying, uh, you know, 45, no, just $45, dollars let not make any difference. Let's take $27. That would be $270 or $450 whatever it is, okay, or if you pay 41, then that's $410, whatever it is. Generally speaking, the IMO starts you low, and they go up to, you know, 49 or, or even above that based on your contract rate. So the more money you make, the, the higher your contract rate, the more you're going to pay for the leads in general, right? But I'm, so we're using these numbers kind of loose. At the end of the day, if you have $410 in these 10, 10 leads, they've spent 700 to generate those 10 leads because they're, they're having to pay for the, the data from the county, the lead, the company put the stamp on it, mail it out, you know, and they're only getting 1% or 2% back. So you and I are only having to pay for the 1% or 2% that came back. A real important thing for you to understand, right? Now look, expect to spend an, on your advertising budget, and leads are our advertising budget. Look, all businesses advertise, and they usually spend more money on advertising when businesses are slow, not good. Right? They're going to advertise at the good times, too. It's easy to do that because you've got money flowing. What's difficult is putting that credit card out and, and getting that yellow page ad going when business is slow. But if you don't do that, then you have no business. So understand, leads is our advertising expense or in this industry. And you should expect to spend, on average, 10 to 15% of what you expect to earn. So if you want to make $1,000 a week, you need to expect, to expect to spend on leads $150 to $200 per week on leads. That's a good number, and you've seen it on my other videos, so I don't want to go too deep into the weeds on that, I'm trying to keep these videos sharp, short, and to the point, right? Now look, if you owned a donut shop, it's a mindset issue, it's a Sunday, we talk about mindset. If you owned a donut shop, and you could buy one million dollars worth of advertising, and be assured that if I spent a million dollars on advertising, I'd sell 40 million dollars worth of donuts, here's my question, would you do it? And if you would do it, how often would you do it and, and how fast would you run to find that $1 million to invest in your donut advertising, right? Think about it, right? If you knew that, if that's the, your path to selling your product, you would do it, right? Control your mindset by controlling your expectation. Now, what about our business? We've already talked about we don't have to spend thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars to be in a brick and mortar business. That's what I love about this business. It's a very low entry fee, but a huge, huge, humongous upside, right? Huge. And work-life balance to boot, right? So what's, what, what do we have? Look, all of our applications are free. They're right here. I, I call up the, the Mutual Omaha, and I say, hey, send me, send me 100 applications of, all, you know, of each one of your products. But I, I have them in, my, in a bucket in my car, free. They don't, I don't even pay for the shipping. No charge. Over here, I had to pay for my brochures. I had to get a graphic artist, design them, and have them printed, and then supply them to my salespeople so they can go give them away. Here, I just order more of them. That's it. And I can get full color brochures of the products sent to me for free. All marketing brochures you need on 50 different products or whatever it is shipped to you, no cost. Payroll services for you and your agent, no cost. So if you want to build an agency, you can bring people in Plug them into a training system. The training in most, in some cases, in our case, is all free. We charge for no training. We charge for no technology. None of that stuff. Some do, so be careful. But the idea is that you can plug them into a training system that works, and they'll get, they're going to get paid by Mutual Omaha, Foresters, uh, you know, uh, CVFG, GPM, AIG, Transmit. All those companies will pay them direct, and you get paid the override. You don't have to worry about 1099, uh, you know, taxes filed every year, payroll deductions, uh, you know, workman's comp, none of that stuff. I had workman's comp over here. So I have a payroll service with Mutual Omaha. <laughs> and they, they just send me what's, me, what, what's due me. 
and they, and they take care of the 1099 agents. No cost, right? Training for you and your agents, I already talked about that, unlimited. Disclaimer there is, is that you have to make sure you're an IMO that does provide this. And I'm not talking about training that goes through some upline, downline from you, or upline from you, whatever it is, that knows nothing about the industry. It's going by a book. He's doing as I say, not doing as I do, right? You need to be with an IMO that provides a tremendous amount of training at the, at the IMO level, and... The, the person that, that, you're bring, that you're joining, the agency that you're joining, they should provide training as well. None of this should cost you money. Next is technology, right, to conduct your business on, right? When I go out and write an application, it's a paper application. I get in the car, I take my phone out, I shoot, the, I shoot pictures of the app, and I upload it to, the, to, the, uh, to my agent dash. I don't have to develop that. It's provided to me, and it's provided to me. For, uh, so I get that, and all my agents get that for free. Conference calls, webinars, coaching, people want to help you succeed but again the disclaimer is ask them are you in production or are you recruiting or are you building an agency the silence is a killer right you can't be coached or mentored by somebody that doesn't leave in the front and doesn't put their own name on an application why do this simple the nine to five that you're clocking into every day right now that is you building their lifestyle your boss he has the time to spend with his family because you don't. You sold out. Again, this is the hard hat series. He bought your life, your time to build his lifestyle. Look, our business is simple. You've heard me say it before. You get a lead, you make a dial, you make an appointment, you run an application, you get it from submission to commission, you get paid, and then you rinse and repeat. Your ongoing expenses, continuing education, CE, every year or two, that's it. Where else can you go and make doctor type money? I'm talking about multiple six figures a year, no recruiting, only running leads, writing applications. So much given to you and so little that you have to learn, right? Look, here's the expectations, because I like to deal with these. Counsel with someone that's leading from the front, right? That's important. Number one, counsel. Counsel with somebody that can that's gonna that's gonna mentor you and coach you. I hate the word mentor because it sounds like network marketing. I'm talking about a mentor. A guy's been in, mentor means they have experience. They've been in the business for a long period of time. They can teach, mentor you on your case, on every case that you go out on. That's a mentor. Someone that can show you the ropes because they've done it. Not somebody's reading in a book. Okay, I'm supposed to recruit her in order to get in order to get promoted. I have to recruit five people. Not, that's not what I'm talking about, right? Resources, leads, warm market, cold market, whatever, you need that. Three is activity. The only thing that's going to kill you in this business is none of those things I just mentioned. It's the white space on your calendar. Four, momentum. It's what gets you there. But habits, the good habits of counsel, resources, your activity, daily activities will keep you there, right? Develop a habit. Okay, income expectations. Here we go, right? You want to make three to $5,000 a week, okay? This is what need. you need. You need five to ten appointments. That doesn't mean five to ten leads. It means five to ten appointments. Depending on what leads that you buy and what your skill level is will determine how many leads you need in order to set five to ten appointments. If you want to make, um, okay, you want to make ten to fifteen thousand dollars a week, this is what you need on average. You need ten to twenty appointments. Okay, I'm not saying leads. I'm saying appointments. You want to make fifteen to twenty thousand a week? You can do that here, right? We have people doing it. You need twenty to twenty-five appointments. So again, depending on your skill set, right, and the quality of the lead and the age of the lead determines how many leads that you're going to need to set those kind of appointments. And from there, you can calculate the number of leads you need to be working each week to set the number of appointments you need to hit your goal. All right, listen, I'm going to close it right here. It's been too long already. Dig your well before you're thirsty. Dig your well before you're thirsty, right? We have high upfront commissions, residuals on products after 12 months, passive income if you are going to be agency building. But look, bad things happen to good people. Health changes everything, right? If 100% of your income is coming from your own efforts and you're required to perform every day, you're fixing to get killed. Look, I told myself years ago, if I can't leverage it, I'm not doing it. Leverage means residual and passive income, right? And remember, as we close the video out, the surest way not to fail is to be determined to succeed. If you're determined to succeed, you cannot fail, right? Don't forget to hit the subscribe button below if you haven't already done that. Mash the bell for instant notifications. Send me some comments. 
push the like. All right, I hope you got something out of this video. Thanks for going on this journey with me. We're looking to, look, it's your comments, your texts, your emails, your phone calls. I get them all, all, all week long. I wake up every day to voicemails from all of you that, look, may be somewhere where you want to be. That's fine. You may be somewhere you don't want to be. You're trying to get out and get somewhere where it's not a massive recruiting organization. It's not network marketing. You want to make serious income in a serious industry. If that's you, reach out to me, willing to help anybody that needs my help. So if you know somebody like that, look, we're trying to create a great thing here. We're really going to get the nuts and bolts of what it takes to succeed in this industry. We're going to provide training if you can't get it where you're at. Right? Then you have to ask yourself, do I really want to be with a company or an IMO or with a recruiter that doesn't do the business himself or herself? They're simply in it because they figure if I recruit enough people, somebody's going to make me rich. you got to be leading from the front. Do me a favor, share the video out, like the video if, if you would, please. Hit the subscribe button, mash that bell, and let's communicate. I really am grateful for each and every one of you to spend a half hour with me. Uh, once or twice a week. Remember, the surest way to succeed is to be determined not to fail. I'll see you on Wednesday. Bye-bye.